how, how do you feel about like influencing all those people? Um, I mean, do you ever feel like a, a responsibility? No, I don't. I don't ever feel the responsibility um, to impress people with with my music. I do feel like I got to get in and do do um, my music to the best of my ability, you know. And I feel like I'm my worst critic, you know. If if I'm not digging it, it ain't the shit, you know. So um, the critics out there can basically like kiss my ass straight up because they know nothing about what goes into this. They're just people with a nine to five behind a fucking typewriter and a CD player listening to it and critiquing it. You know, you can't criticize something that somebody's working real hard on because that can like shatter their whole shit. You know, it might be a hit record in them. You know, that's why like. Shit I be seeing in the Source magazine and them critiquing records and, you know, nobody can critique my shit unless you've done half of the stuff that I've accomplished. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can critique the shit, you know? There's nothing saying that I'm going to make a, a fucking smash every time I go in the studio. That's what I set out to do, but like I said before, you don't know what the public is going to dig. So all the critics just need to shut the fuck up until they do or try to do the shit that they're criticizing. Totally agree with that. <laughs> what, now, what do you think about like some of these magazines? That I think they instigate problems. You yeah. Know, I, mean, I have some friends at the source, but uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think they get out of control. Yeah, I think um, the magazines do instigate a lot of the problems, you know. And they do the shit to sell magazines, but it's, it's like hurting more than helping. You know what I'm saying? Like the source magazine. They always got shit going on, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to them, but they always got some bullshit flying around. You know, the Vibe magazine is more, is, is more mature, you know what I'm saying? I like reading the Vibe magazine, you know? Sometimes I'm scared to look in the source, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, who's dissing who, who's fucking who, and uh, man, come on with that. You know, I want to I wanna read some intelligent shit. Right. Now, what is your whole take on the like the east coast west coast thing and do you think that's a media thing too that have prepared, you know the whole east the whole east coast west coast thing um it did get souped up with the media straight up the media souped the shit up and you know you read some shit that somebody on the east coast said about the west coast and vice versa and you you got major problems when it's all bullshit you know what i'm saying um the smart people know that you just can't diss a whole coast. If you got a problem with somebody, you got a problem with that individual, you know? Square off with him. Don't go dissing a whole fucking coast, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, the public is not, uh, the public is not stupid. They know what time it is. They know what you're trying to do. You're trying to sell some records, straight up. Because if you had beef with a person, you're going to step to that person and say what you got to say. You know what I'm saying? And handle it like a goddamn man, straight up. Instead of getting on a record, spending hours and hours in the studio trying to think of some shit to say about a whole fucking coast. When you can handle it with a simple phone call or simply walking up to the person, getting your shit off your chest. Yeah, but don't you think, I mean, for some people that sells records too. Yeah, it definitely sells records and that's what, that's, that's what it's all about when, you know, it's going to present more of a, more of a problem. You know. but, but then, like, back in the day, like, battle records were always popular. You know, I mean, my thing is, it's okay to let your frustrations out on a record as long as it doesn't lead to the street. Yeah, battle records, right? You talk about battle records. Um, that was then, you know what I'm saying? People ain't walking around with no shoestrings in their shoes no more either. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's making no fucking battle records no more. I mean, people still dissing people on record, but that is a fucking childish brain, you know? You're stuck in the fucking 80s. It's time to move on to something else. Come anew, you know, been there, done that, let's move on. Yeah, explain that a little bit about that comment, you know, been there, done that. Been like, there, what, done that. Go ahead, finish. You know, like, what, you know, just tell me that perspective and like, you know, I mean, I think that's a great way to move forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking about, you know, and this is coming just, just from me, you know, I ain't trying to speak for anybody else. Um, as far as, the lyrical content on records, you know, let's move on, you know, how many times can you kill people on the record? How many times can you say motherfucker, you know? I mean, it's time to move on and come up with some new shit. <laughs> Straight up, you know, whether it be me, whether it be the next man, let's move on, you know, because I'm tired of going in the fucking record shops 
and the rap section being all the way in the back of the fucking store. You go on Tower Records and you ask for the rap section and they immediately point your ass to the back of the fucking store and you got to go through there and the section is about five feet wide and the reason is nobody's putting out no good product, you know? Everybody's doing the same shit, you know? Until we start having some fucking variety and everybody starts getting in, doing different shit instead of trying to follow what the next man is doing. The rap section will continue to be in the fucking back of the store. Rap section, hip hop section, whatever the fuck you want to call it, you know. It's going to continue to be in the back of the store until somebody or everybody steps up and starts doing different shit. Can you talk about some of the elements of the music? Um, elements and I use in production. Yeah. Um, okay. And you gotta keep it kind of basic for people like that never been done. Right. Well, uh, when I'm producing, I mean, I try to make the song fit the artist. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <clears throat> I like to roll with with the people that I'm producing for a while before we start working and you know kick it around. Just get into their head and try to make the music fit them. That way, it's more comfortable and it's 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 a hit. Like for instance, I wouldn't like um, use a track that I'm doing for Snoop Dogg for Rage, you know what I'm saying? Rage is, 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 she's just on some different shit. She's one of the tightest female artists, period, to me. Me personally, she's one of the tightest females that ever touched a microphone, straight up. And um, in my experience, it's just been, it, it has been hard to find a female to work with that I'm really digging, you know? And out here on the West Coast, there's not that many females that get in, get into rap, you know what I'm saying? They, they're on nine to fives, you know? Um, it, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I was trying to do an East Coast, West Coast killer joint with just all, with, with all females on it. And I couldn't think of any females out here that I was digging to put on the record. So it never came about, you know? So females, you know, all the females out there, <laughs> if you out here, I'm looking for some straight up. <laughs> uh, uh, commercial uh, message <laughs> talk, talk about the universal element of uh, hip hop and rap um, like you, you were talking about yeah I mean the universal element of hip hop is like like I was saying man everybody has their own sound every, every section, every sector every, every borough has its own sound you know what I'm saying the West Coast has their own sound, East Coast has their sound, and everybody can get into it. If you like, sometimes you just don't want to listen to the West Coast shit. You want to listen to East Coast shit, or you want to listen to Outkast or Goody Mob down south, Scarface, the, you know, everybody from rap a lot. I was even in Japan, you know. They got a hip-hop section. I mean, they got people that seriously into hip-hop in Japan, and it kind of fucked me up, you know. I went out there and saw Afros, Lowriders, and all kind of shit, you know. So it's all about you know, what you like listening to. But don't down anybody else for trying to do this music because you never know what it's going to evolve into, you know? Cool. So you had all these genres that were kind of, you know, stolen or whatever. Yeah, I mean, um, black music, a music that, you know, black people created are the most powerful to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what were we saying? Right? What, what was I going to say before we started filming? Oh, uh, shit. Um, About it being, like, you know, uniquely African-American or black? Yeah, I mean, um, hip-hop is a way for people that um, don't know how to play any instruments or anything like that to be able to get in the studio and still make a record. You know, you can sample. It's, it's very easy to make a hip-hop record. It's not easy to make a good hip-hop record, but it's easy to come in and make a hip-hop record, you know. I think that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of problems with it, because it's so easy to do. Anybody can come in the studio and make a record. With film, you know, you just can't say, okay, I want to make a movie and go out there and do it. You can wake up and say, I want to make a record, and there's studios everywhere. You can just go in and you can make a record, seriously, and which means there's going to be more idiots involved more shysty people involved, which means you're going to have some problems, you know? <laughs>